Welcome everyone to the Hobby Desk. Today I'm going to make meat gravy granules. I mean a water tower for sci-fi games. Okay, so what do I mean by water tower? Well, there's not a lot of water towers around where I live, but I have googled a few pictures. Uh, a lot of American style water towers have a, a large cylinder uh, with a a conical top and it stands on a iron girder type frame so a sci-fi version of this would be a lot of metal in my head so I'm gonna have a metal like I said girder frame RSJ frame something like that made from sprue and I'm gonna sit it on some wire mesh and then this thing here I'm gonna make it look like it's all beaten and patched up so I'll use plastic card or cardboard and stick little patches onto this and then I will drill some small holes and add some rivets but of course you can adapt this to make it stand on a wooden style plinth instead so I nearly said Costa, whoops <clears throat> of course I can't say Costa because I don't want to get sued right Costa stair sticks or a coffee stair stick um, style bed so make it look like wooden planks and then you can use a wooden frame as well, so balsa wood or coffee stir sticks again. Uh, but yeah, for me, I'm making this for Outlands because I love Outlands. Not biased at all, you know, not a co creator of the game. Uh, if you haven't heard of Outlands, please, please check it out. It is a fantastic game. I will put a link below. Um, this would be great for any other sci fi game, so from anything like 40k, Infinity, anything like that, it's just. A little something fun. All right, it's not a building you can hide in or something like that, but it's just a bit of table filler. Okay, all right. I'll start getting some components ready. Okay, so what I'm going to use for the main platform for this nice gravy granule container to sit on. Look how how long I've kept this? Can you look at the thick dust on there? September 2019. Rule number one of hobby making: never chuck anything out. So. I'm going to have a nice piece of sprue for the base, so I'm going to cut out this section and this section, uh, place them back to back, and put some wire mesh on. So you can use mesh from anything like, um, I may have liberated it from my body shop stores, uh, but you can use speaker mesh, any soft mesh is great. If anyone's chucking out anything like a sieve, that kind of graded mesh, but obviously it depends on your scale of game. So most of the games I use are about 28 mil, something like that. So that would be perfect. So I'm going to cut these out and have them as my main base. And I'm going to possibly make it a bit, a bit more grim dark, a bit more sci-fi by using these parts here that I've kept from a Games Workshop 40k piece of terrain. So I'm going to cut those out and possibly put on there if the mood strikes. And then I'll have to make up my metal frame. So I'll have to root around in my bits box and see what I can find. So first things first, cutting out this frame. So I'm going to crudely cut it out initially and then clean it up later on. So a nice pair of sneeps, hobby sneeps. Pink. And you get the picture. But what I'm going to do once it's cut out is trim it up, make it look a little bit neater, even though this is sci fi. I want to make it look a bit beaten. I will cut off all the little knobbly bits like this. And anything raised on these old bits of sprue like that, I'll also cut off and find out, uh, file down with some fine files. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to cut out the basic shape like this and clean it up. Okay so I cut the sprue out and then I filed off any knobbly little bits yep that's very technical knobbly little bits um, and I stuck the sprue back to back like so and a couple other pieces of sprue across like that not because the the cravey pot is heavy but I want it to look like a big steel drum um, 
<coughs> with gallons and gallons of water in it and uh, it wouldn't support the weight. So I'll put those across and I'll cut some mesh and lay over the top and I'll stick my gravy granules tub on top of that. So the mesh I'm talking about, uh, what I'm personally using is this stuff. So you can see it's old, I've used it for something else in the past. Um, it's quite a fine mesh, you can see my hand behind it like that. Uh, but whatever scale miniatures you're using, I mean you could always use uh, what they call granny grading in the States, or cross stitch mesh, which is this stuff. Uh, this stuff is really, 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 really cheap. Uh, you know, you can get an A3 sheet for maybe a quid or a couple of quid. Uh, you could always use uh, check plate or green stuff um, world. There's fantastic sheets. Uh, so plastic sheets in A4 size, so like check plate um, and mesh, things like that. I've got a little stash next to me at all times. So this is what I'm talking about. So that stuff it looks fantastic on there. But it looks a little bit too neat, you know. Uh, I would have to patch it, put little patches of it, because I want to make it sci-fi looking and post-apocalyptic. Um, so I don't want it too, too neat. Like one single sheet, I would probably cut it into patches and stick it on and overlap. I could always use corrugated cardboard as well, because that looks great for corrugated sheeting. But I'm using this stuff, and that's just my personal preference. The others are just recommendations. And it's brilliant for cutting. It's super, super, super easy. So I will show you how easy it is to cut. Just a regular pair of old scissors. Not your finest scissors, and I'm just going to cut that so it's nice and square with the rest of it. So it literally cuts that easy. And I'll never even chuck little bits like that because that's great for a base for a miniature. I'll just tidy that up. And there we go. So I'm going to curve the edges a little bit because if you noticed, these corners are slightly curved. And once I've done that, I will stick it over the top. All ready for my drum to stick on top of that. So when that's all done, then you can select your legs and whatever layout you want to make the legs. Traditional tripod shape. Um, you could do uh, one in each corner, slight angled. Um, and I like this stuff. So this is relatively inexpensive from a local hobby supply from uh, train supplies. Um, this was relatively inexpensive. I think this was like a 175 for a little bit of plastic uh, RSJ looking. I think that's fantastic. I mean, you could always use, like I said, stir sticks. Matches are quite thick if you want to make it look really rickety. Um, wooden dowels. I've got some wooden square looking bits you could use that instead uh, but for this um, I'm thinking it's not going to be very high off the ground so I'm going to measure this up what it look like if I cut it evenly into four and if it's a reasonable height I will do that okay so my tower is all stuck to the base relatively happy with that uh, next thing is I found these in moustache of bits, as you do. Um, I've got two of them, and they're about 10 inches long, so I'm going to cut each one in half. Um, give me a bit more height, because traditionally water towers are quite tall, and I'm going to cut them at such an angle they are slightly splayed, so something kind of like that. Um, because if I cut the other piece in four, they only would have been about three inches off the ground. So I want to get some height, and what I was also thinking was using um, cork at the base of these to make it look like concrete blocks, because often these are concreted into the ground. So I think I will do that. Right, so I'll cut these in half at a slight angle, and then attach it to the base for my tower. So what I'm going to use to cut these things isn't a hobby knife because you'll put too much effort into it even on a cutting mat 
and you can slip uh, there's a lot of pressure whereas these hobby saws are very accurate uh, relatively safe so if I wanted to cut my hand I would have to saw through my hand to do it whereas a hobby knife I would probably be losing limbs um, so I will mark this in the right place with a decent ruler and use the hobby saw rather than putting excess pressure in now all of these things that I'm using are household materials you could use instead like I said you can use stir sticks you don't have to go out and buy this um, most of my sci-fi terrain is done on a budget it's so normally household products sprue doesn't cost you anything this mesh is next to nothing whatever mesh you decide to use I generally don't use expensive stuff keep the hobby cheap and obviously a gravy pot well you've probably got one of those you've just chucked in the bin um, this if you did want to go for something like this um, rather than using household materials you know they are maybe a couple couple pounds something like that, a couple of the old fine British pounds so it's not going to be an expensive piece uh, but you know if you wanted to do up your game and you wanted to use something a bit finer um, you know you can buy things rather than using household materials okay so I stuck the legs on at a slight angle so I'd imagine they're slightly splayed to take the weight of the heavy heavy drum of water and I've put a few cocktail sticks just to support so cutting a cocktail stick at a slight angle and gluing it on as support because I just thought it looked a bit skinny and looked a bit naked at the top there would uh, a girder of that size really support so I have stuck some metal support metal adjusts on the side there like so next comes the conical section. By conical section what do I mean? Well the top hat section. So you need a big circle obviously bigger than your bestow tub or whatever you're using. So what I'm going to do is draw all the way around something round It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll cut that out in a second. So once it's stuck, it will look something like this. Now it doesn't have to be too perfect, and you can see that the seam is still fairly obvious. But the idea of this is this is a sci-fi post-apocalyptic water tower, so it's going to be really rough, and I'm going to stick patches on it because this thing has been repaired time and time again. So some of those patches will cover up that overlap there. Okay, so I'll stick it now to my tower, off camera, so now you can't see me sticking my hands to it and swearing and making a mess. Right, so the next thing is, for me personally, this is just a little touch that I like to put in, cut two centimetres of cork stripping. So this stuff is fantastic. I got this from a DIY store, which I will not name. It was half price, so six quid for 12 strips, I believe really really long and I've used them on previous videos and they look great for concrete blocks, concrete walls, things like that and that's what I'm planning to do so I cut a two centimeter strip, two centimeter strip glue them back to back and I'm going to stick them on all the feet of these tower legs so it looks like they're sat into concrete uh, I mean you could base the whole thing on a large bit of thick cardboard or maybe MDF or something, and if you want to put sand on it or make it look towny, that's great. Uh, which will strengthen the legs, but the reason I don't do that if I can help it on large pieces of the terrain is if I do paint it and put sand on it and make it look all desertified, fantastic. But then when you put down a town mat, it looks a bit out of place, and vice versa. If you put like paving slabs and things like that on it, and it's in the middle of a desert, it looks a bit weird. So. If I do it like this, then it should look uh, in keeping with any table I put it on. So I'll do that now. I'll cut out two centimeter little strips and I'll glue them back to back. Of course, you could make it taller, big chunks of cork, make it stand really, really high up. But uh, this is five inches at the moment and I think that's about right for a table. I don't want it too, too crazy, even though water towers are supposed to be quite high off the ground. So I'll carry on cutting some strips. 
Now I know I was thinking about using these Games Workshop railings to go around the side. And that looks, you know, sci-fi as it's supposed to. Um, but it looks a little bit chunky. It looks a bit too well armoured. Um, they were from a um, Conquest set, Conquest uh, magazine I got. Uh, Galvanic Walkways. I have done an unboxing video on it in the past. And there's a few spare ones. They look great. They look fine. Um, you know, something you'll find in your bits box. Brilliant. If you want to use that, that's okay. Uh, but that's quite specific. And this is from um, homemade um, pieces, stuff lying around the house. Now, I found some of this in a garden centre years ago. And I think that would be pretty good for a fence. Probably about the right scale to go around the edge. Um, pretty tough wearing. Not likely to break or bend or snap off. Um, so I think I'll stick some of that around the side. So I'll cut some of this off and put it around the side and see what it looks like. If not, I can always fall back on my bits box pieces. So um, we'll cut some of this off and see what it looks like. So I'll just cut off a little strip. Um, I'm thinking most of my miniatures are about 28mm. I don't want it too, too tall. So I'm thinking that kind of height. So a couple runs. Because a railing would be mm, probably about waist height on most uh, most people, I guess. So I'm going to go for that and put it all the way around. Okay, I'll trim up the wire because there's a few little sharp edges on the top there with my little hobby file so I don't snag myself in future. Okay, so I have put this barrier in, a uh, bit of a destroyed side, carrying on to there. Uh, basically what I've done is every now and again I've kept one piece slightly longer than the others, drilled a hole and put a little dab of glue in each, uh, purely because it makes it a bit stronger. Um, I don't really want it breaking off. There's not much surface contact, so I thought I'd give it more surface contact by drilling holes and actually slotting it in. Yes, it may take a little bit longer, especially if you want to do every single one, but it will last longer. I mean, if you just put a little dab of glue on the end of each one, it would easily break off. So, that should make it a little bit stronger. I want to make it look a little bit beaten, and obviously there was an explosion or something there. It's destroyed that. Because remember, this will eventually be weathered, beaten up. Uh, nice bit of rust here and there, explosive marks, things like that. So that'd be black and charred over here, things like that. So I've left a little gap over here because I want to make a ladder. And over here, I've actually cut a little hole in the fence. I don't know if you can see. As I want to cut a bit of plastic pipe and make some kind of drain for the tower, because after all it's a water tower, it's not much good if you can't access the water inside. So I have cut at an angle, a bit of pipe, measured it, it's going to go there. So I went to the plastic glue dries, I want a bit of plastic glue on there just to bond it a little bit better. When it's fully gone off, I'll give it a quick sand before attaching it to the tower. Okay, so I've sounded the corner piece or the bend in the pipe so it looks a little bit smoother. Once it's sprayed up, I'm sure it'll look fine. Uh, I've just put a little bit of paint on the end of this and stuck it through the hole where I wanted it to mark where I wanted the drill. Because once again, if I'm gluing on here, that's a cylinder, remember, and it's less sur surface area for me to stick on. So I want a small hole so I can slide that in. Lots of surface area to stick, a bit of a surface area there because it does go all the way to the floor and if it does snag on a piece of terrain or when I'm moving it and shifting it to the club on Friday night I might knock it and break it off, so more surface area the better so it should fit in there rather snugly if I can get in there, yep like so, give it a bit of a wriggle up until it stops there so I will glue it there and there and next, there's a gap here I left on purpose for the ladder. Now, like I said, rule number one, never chuck anything away. Here's the green sprue from earlier on when I made the frame at the very beginning. And I'm thinking that would be a thumping good ladder. And it's about the right height. Ideal. 
So I'll start sticking some runs in here. And when that's complete, I'll cut it out and I'll stick it to the side of the tower. Okay, so I cut out my basic frame. That's how I want it. Um, I say basic frame because measure the height, it's the right height I want. There's no point in me cutting the top and bottom bit off and then making the ladder steps in between. I might as well use this as a frame, put the ladder steps all the way in, then cut off the top and bottom using it as a frame. So what I'm using as the ladder steps are good old fashioned matchsticks. Now, uh, I think it was a bag from the pound shop possibly, so guess what, it was a pound. But obviously most houses have matchsticks, so that's why I'm using them. I just buy them in bulk from the pound shop. So, so far, most of this stuff has been from household materials. Yes, I've used this plastic um, box section, but you could use anything you want from pens, I suppose, or you could use stir sticks. Uh, you could use those cork pieces that I've used as an upright. But so far, household material um, there, household material for the top. Uh, Alright, mesh was quite specific, that's my garden centre, but all things are relatively cheap. This whole thing won't cost me a lot of money, so I do like to make it from, not trash, but household stuff. So, stuff that most people will chuck away. So, stir sticks, chunks of cork, things like that. Uh, just an excuse to drink a few bottles of wine, really. But yeah, I'll do that, I'll start measuring up. I know this is a centimetre and a half between these runs. So I will do that now, start cutting some matchsticks and glue into place. Okay, so I finished the ladder and I've stuck it to the side. So matches every so often, and I've left one match out because I want it to make it look a bit beaten, a bit worn. Um, and speaking of worn, a bit beaten, I want to weld a few patches to my tower. So for weld, I like to use this also from a pound store. Uh, it's 3D Pearl Effects, which is basically, um, you can use it when you are doing paper craft and things like that. It's just a bit of a thick gel, it doesn't matter what it looks like because we'll paint over it, even though it does look a bit metallic-y. Uh, and when it goes off, it just looks like a, you can do little dots like spot welding, or I like to do a little seam. So it looks like seam welding, like someone's welded the panel on. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. And you can also glue patches on like the plastic card that we mentioned previously it looks like check plate to this stuff. It's pretty cool. But we're trying to use house and materials, so I'll be using that today. I'll be using a good old fashioned cardboard, just a few patches to stick on. Once they're stuck on, I'll drill little holes in the corners and things um, with a tiny little drill bit and add some of these. So once again, relatively inexpensive, a couple of quid for about a thousand of these little beads. Um, and the reason I drill a hole and place these guys in with a tiny spot of glue is it's better that than trying to cut them in half and watch them fly across the room. I don't have time nor the eyesight for that. So I will drill tiny little holes and then drop these in every time. And then they look like little rivets when they're dry. So. I will show you this gel in a minute, so I'll give it a bit of a shake. It is a bit thick, and the nozzle does like to block up. But the idea basically is, if we put it to one side here, we can weld with this little thing. So I will make a little welded patch, so just Tease along, making it as thick and as raised as you want. This is not how I do welding at work, by the way. I think I'm getting a bit low. I'll give it bit of a shake. It's quite thick stuff, but you don't want to squeeze too hard because it will just fire out of the tube. And you want it like that. 
any shape you want, just to make it look like it's a welded patch. So great for those orky vehicles, for those who play a bit of 40k. There you go, so that's just one patch there. And now we'll do another one. Like I said, you can do it as thick as you want. There's not much shrinkage in this and it will dry as hard as like PVA. It's fantastic really. I think it was from the pound store, so it was you guessed it, one fine British pound. But yeah, do a couple panels like that maybe. I'll do another one. Along here. A bit thicker. Just like so. I'll just a few of those on one side and I'll glue a couple patches of cardboard on the other side. Okay, so I drilled some little holes next with a little bit of super glue and now I'm gonna put the ball in. So I wanna do this on camera just so you can have a laugh at me as I am messing this up good and proper. So the ball's there, I need to roll it in the hole. There we go. Simple as that. So make sure the hole doesn't go all the way through unless you want a hole that's been drilled and the rivet never went in. So you could do that, drill it all the way through and leave a rivet out, partial hole, partial hole, and just drop the balls in with a little drop of super glue, just the tiniest drop, rinse and repeat on all the corners or as many as you want. You could always do a whole ring of them around this plate if you wanted to, but I'd imagine it's just been riveted in each corner do another one there maybe, there and there and there, or you could just do a whole string of them. I'm not that crazy, I'm not going to do that many, just one in every corner. Okay, so after minimal super glue on my fingers, surprisingly, um, all the rivets are done. So, you know, you can add as much detail as you want to this thing, you can make it really, really beaten, really chipped, bullet holes in it, or you can make it a nice tidy water tower. You don't have to make it rickety like I'm doing, um, don't have to put welded patches in, riveted panels on, or even blown apart side like that. You can actually make a sensible water tower. Now I know most water towers have a circular platform all the way around it, but I wanted enough room for a space marine basically, that's what I was aiming for, uh, to be put on there, uh, because I'm going to use this for 40k games at the local club, as well as Outlands. So. Outlands miniatures, yes, you could use 25mm, 28mm, 30mm, 35mm, whatever you want, pretty much. Uh, but I want a decent size, you know, gap all the way around. <clears throat> and yes, I could have cut something out, maybe some of that granny grading, as I was calling it, that cross stitch mesh in a circle fashion and making a circle fence around it. Um, but I wanted to make it look a bit industrial, a bit cobbled together. So this is why I've done it this way. But, you know, choice is yours. You can make a round platform as most modern day water towers are. Um, you know, you can always have a flat top on it. You don't have to have this rocket looking thing on the top. And you can also have different legs. This is just the way I've done it. And hopefully I've inspired you, um, not necessarily to make this particular product if you didn't want to, but a few tips and tricks on how to make the fences or do the weld, things like that. Hopefully watching this video has taught you something or give you some inspiration for another piece of terrain possibly. Okay, so the next stage is good old cheapy rattle can. So I'm gonna prime this thing up with a rattle can, uh, put probably two light coats over the whole thing and then we'll get to painting it. I'm probably gonna use an airbrush and then lots of dry brushing because it's lots of surface area and um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I want to make it look a bit grubby, maybe throw some oils on it, something like that. But in the meantime, I'm going to use the rattle can and put a couple of nice smooth coats on it. 
Okay, so the good old cheapy rattle can it covers quite well, so generally, like most things I collect, come from Poundland, or a shop very, very similar. So, yes, you guessed it, it costs only a pound. So you can see that nice bit of weld there that I've done, and that's been done with that squiggly glue stuff, that glittery stuff, also from Poundland. It looks a bit better, and there's the old rivets there, you can see the rivets. Excellent and a few patches on the roof. But yeah, you can do as many patterns as you want. You can make it look a bit neater, but it's totally up to you. So in the background, you can hear me shaking, not beating somebody. I am shaking a nice burnt umbra. So this Vallejo paint is rather nice. I'm gonna mix it up. And we'll spray the whole thing. So you can hear the good old compressor kicking in now. So with this stuff, I'm going to cover pretty much the whole thing. This burnt amber. It's just a nice, fun enough, burnt amber colour, nice and brown. Uh, I'm not going to do it too solid. I'm going to do it slightly patchy in places. It's going to make the whole thing look a bit rusty and dry brush it on some rivets. Uh, it's probably best to wear a rubber glove, as always. I do like this stuff, it's fantastic. Later on it will look really rusty. And of course you can always use a regular brush, you don't have to use an airbrush, but it's just time saving. You got it? You might as well use it, right? Put this on as thick as you like. And yeah, I really do like this colour. Nice, natural, rusty look to it. Right, I'm going to come back. Once I sprayed what I wanted with this. So, the burnt umber's gone on. And I've added a tiny hint of orange in a few places there, just so it looks slightly rusty. Next thing is a little bit of dry brush silver, and you can add as much or as little of any silver. It doesn't have to be this silver. And I'm just going to put a little bit on a piece of tissue, on an old brush, wipe off the excess to give the old dry brush effect. So. I am just literally just going to bring up anything like this, I'm like picking out the weld a bit more. Because I want my stuff to look really, really rusty. I'm not going to pick out a perfect definition of the weld. I'm going to see a little bit of that poking through the rivets, just there and there. I'm going to rivet there as well. Edges of my panels. It's going to go around, find some bits. So it stands out just a little bit more. I want this thing to be really, really rusty. But you guys can add as much color to this as you want. It doesn't have to be this color. It could be a nice red tower or something and it's all flaked and chipped or it could just be perfect. You can paint it whatever the way you want. This is just what I'm doing. And I'll carry on with that for a minute. So, I've added a few little touches, so I've painted a couple of the little panels like this, a few rust streaks, a little poster, a little tuft of grass here and there. Um, but you can decorate this any way you want. I was really, really tempted to paint the original burnt umber and then use a little bit of the orange like I did 
then use the chipping medium because I really love that stuff. Chipping medium is fantastic. Uh, I would paint it like a bone color, weather up, look really dirty, and then just start peeling all the colors off uh, with a stiff brush. Use a toothbrush, um, a secondhand toothbrush, not you know my current toothbrush, and uh, just a few little details. Um, the Texaco sign there, a bit beaten up. Um, a bit of graffiti saying this way up. Just some small little touches to make it look a bit more realistic because it wouldn't be perfect. Uh, this area I've just blasted this kind of area lightly with uh, airbrush, just a dark color there to make it look like it's been hit with a rocket launcher or something. And on the top, just bashed it a little bit with a sponge and some silver. But yeah, you can add whatever you want to this thing. This is just how I did it. It's a little tuft of grass there. A bit of weathering powder here and there. But there you go. There's your sci-fi water tower. Just giving you a few ideas. How can you achieve it? All right, thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, please like the video. Uh, if you don't like it, tell us why. You know, it's it's totally fine to hit the thumbs down, but please tell us why. And uh, hopefully catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and hobby safe.